Um, do I want to engage in the vote straight away, though? I kind of want to drop the 100 points on this. And now we just need to save up a, like, 200 political power before we actually do the vote. So there's going to be a bunch of other things that we need to work on. Unfortunately, because of high taxes, political power is slower to gain. Civilian construction. Yes, of course. We do need to continue these. That's 1970. Resource extraction's pointless. Um, so, we need to make some decisions about production. I think we definitely want the max factories in state. Just everywhere. So we're going to go horizontal industrial organization because we're just going quantity over quality. So we'll start working on you. And we started with this one. Which is, oh no, that's just raw output. That one has the retention, this one doesn't. I think I'm actually going to switch to mass production methods. We'll go for the high growth and the high cap. Because now we have such a strong economy, we'll probably just keep things permanently in production. How long to the next general election? I actually have no idea. It doesn't say anywhere when the next one is going to be. Which is a little bit concerning. If I'm being honest. Or if it is stated somewhere, please point that out, because I haven't seen it. Oh, we have a 20% dockyard output buff because of Jellico. Interesting. Do we actually have anything we can produce in the dockyards? Because the previous problem we had is that we couldn't. Oh, we can. Uh, interesting. Maybe we should start opening the dockyards up. Surprise elections, how stable and exciting. I mean, under British law, the Prime Minister can choose when to do the election. He has like a one-year window in which to say we're doing an election on this date. So I wonder if that's the case here, in which case I'd probably do it as late as possible. I have my doubts, though. It literally just doesn't say. Fixed term Parliament Acts means that's no longer the case. Oh, really? I completely missed that. I know it used to be the case. Yeah, I think we are going to get some dockyards because I need to organise my navy and decide what exactly we're doing with this. Huzzah! Ah, we have a carrier. That's why we have CF, uh, CVs. I see, I see, I see. Now, where's the CV thing? There it is. So, we have got... 30 planes. Exactly. Unfortunately, they're carrier cast as opposed to carrier naval bombers, but... Beggars can't be choosers, and I have no intention of building more. Ah, oh, the double click's not working. It is not easy managing navies with this screen. Oh, nope. I didn't do it. Oh, it didn't work because there's only one of that type of light cruiser. I understand. Uh, how do I create a new task force? There we go. And then the submarines will split off. And then we have a lot of destroyers. Right now, we only need 12 to screen this fleet.
Which leaves us with 37 spare destroyers. See you, Sindrin. Is the election a countdown on decisions? No. So we definitely need more capital ships. That That's what we're missing. Uh, the next question would be, what type? And have we got any research in this stuff at all? Yeah, we do. Uh, probably carriers? I mean, we're kind of beyond the era of the battleship. Oh, sorry, cruisers, not carriers. In fact, we have 1960 cruisers already, so we should probably start making some of those. Then the next question is... Do these count as capital ships or not? Like, do they need to be screened by destroyers? I mean, we almost certainly want to improve our destroyer. So maybe we just want to spend some time doing sonar and depth charge research to get up to at least the 1960s. And then just overhaul all of our destroyers with those. In the meantime, we'll just build some of the new cruisers. So what's the newest cruiser that we have? So we're not just wasting this capacity. Uh, show any... Cruisers. We don't have any naval experience, so we can't do anything with that. You know what? Before we do this, let's spend some time training the fleet. This is going to absolutely demolish my fuel reserves, but our economy at this point is strong enough that we can get more if we need it. And this is going to generate us a lot of Navy experience, then we can actually develop our Navy models. Reopening. In they came, the Lord Spiritual, representatives of the Anglican Church. The Lords Temporal, hereditary peers who declared themselves for a party in the House of Commons. And the Lords of Appeal in Ordinary, who exercise the legal functions of the Chamber. The ceremony was seeped in tradition, with every moment accounted for and every movement had a reason behind it. The House of Lords was finally reopening, an house untouched by war, and with all the titles and privileges once granted to it. We're slowly going back to normal. Daily political power gain goes down again. Gah! <laughs> That's what I need! So we're not doing the Lord's Act, not while we have not enough political power. So I guess we'll go and do the Old Alliance and we'll re-establish the OFN. Now, did we rejoin that? Yes. Or we could do the Armed Forces and actually establish the Royal Navy stuff while Jellicoe's in power. This also gives a ton of Navy experience, so we can actually get something. Um, hmm. Now here's another interesting question. Do we go for a modern Navy? Or do we go for an old school Navy?
So the loyalty will increase, the efficiency will increase. The modern navy would be carriers and submarines. Which comes with additional air support bonuses. Or we go for the battleships with the old school navy. Fleet coordination, hit chance, range goes up massively. And we also get the HMS Jellico. Interesting. Bearing in mind that our Prime Minister is the son of the hero of Jutland. Take that into account. Because we are currently playing as George Jellico. So we're going to say um, Modern Navy Jellico And vote! Get your votes in! Vote, vote, vote! Let me know what you think. In the meantime... After a long fight, the people of England are finally free. Thanks to the efforts of thousands of brave Englishmen loyal to Queen and country, we have prevailed over our misguided kin and restored democracy and legitimate monarch upon our uh, blessed throne. Now, however, new challenges arise. We'll need a powerful, reformed military to face this brave new world and any hope of remaining afloat. Decades of stagnation and economic downfall have left our armed forces underfunded, undertrained and under-equipped. While our loyal militias have proven their bravery time and time again, we will need a professional military. The Ministry of Defence shall undertake decisive reforms to ensure all of the branches of the armed forces are returned to their former glory. And yes, vote, vote, vote. Get your votes in. Get your votes in. Huzzah! Swift Train, thank you very much for the 20 month resubscription. Very. No, 28th month resubscription. Misread that one. Thank you very, very much for the ongoing support there. I appreciate it. 28 months. Keep up the good work. I will certainly try. Thank you. Um, so, what was the outcome of that vote? Sorry, I got distracted. Jellico Super Navy did indeed win. United Central Region, the UCR, contributed 2,000 channel points. Thank you for that. So. We're going to go with the Jellico fleet. Cool. Good choice, chat. Good choice. And then we are switching over to civilian factories. Because we can actually build a couple more. Now, I am tempted to start trying to build up some military factories. Though I think we're going to have plenty of opportunities to do that going forwards because we are now starting to get the industrial technologies which will add more capacity Das Großgermanische Reich der Deutschen Nation declared war on the Moscow autonomy. I didn't think that was a thing they did. Interesting. So the Reichskommissariat Moskvin is taking power again. I don't remember this happening during the Kemerovo game. Did it? I could have sworn that the Moscow thing was just kind of this unresolved 
thing that was going to happen in the 1970s when they launched the next part of the mod. The effects of unification. Now that some time has passed since the unification, we have finally realised its effects have started to be felt by the people of Wales. Initially, nothing much changed. The shops stayed open, they spoke the same language as before. Many even wondered what all the fuss had been about to begin with. However, this would change. English goods would fill the shelves of the Welsh stores. Joblessness became increasingly common. Didn't we see this already? Ah, Welsh terrorism is now Welsh resistance, so stability, war support and damage to garrisons have all improved. Speaking of which, how is the occupation looking? We are at 21% resistance target. Perfect, so that's fine. And Wales is starting to collaborate. Enoch Powell. Enoch Powell looks onto the scene unfolding in front of him in size. It's the first stopover in his tour of the most important military installations around England, and the situation is already painfully evident. The Royal Artillery Barracks at Woolwich, just a form a few miles from London, are home to one of the most prestigious corps of the Royal Army, but it seems that two decades of neglect and a civil war can break even the toughest spirits and the proudest military traditions. The elegant neoclassical facade is still filled with bullet holes from several collaborator loyalists at, that barricaded themselves inside, forcing the partisans to dig an hole around the ground and collapse part of the western wall to break in. The debris still clogs the road. Inside, the signs of fighting that took place are even more visible, with broken doors and windows, grenade impacts and even a few bloodstains here and there. The Royal Artillery themselves must examine the state of their barracks. Most men have tired expressions and there are holes in their line. The guns are old and rusty, mostly German leftovers. He swears he can recognise a few BL 7.2 inches from the last war. The Union Jack hastily scratched out in favour of the... St George's Cross. The mere fact that these howitzers still worked during the Civil War was practically sorcery. Powell listened dutifully to the officer listing all the shortages of men and material, all of the inefficiencies, old and new, all the problems and proposed solutions. He nodded at the appropriate times and promised to help from the government for such fine young men, even though half of those in uniform had air as white as untouched snow. But a corner of his mind was asking a single question over and over. What do I do if everywhere is like this? Well, you start working on the Navy. For more than three centuries, the Royal Navy has been our greatest military asset and the main instrument of the British superiority over one-fourth of the world. A quarter of the world. Hundreds of ships of the most modern designs used to sail across the seas and the oceans, protecting our colonies and reminding all of our majesty. Even more importantly... Our fleet protected the home islands themselves from any would-be invaders. When London fell to the Germans, dozens of ships were sunk by enemy bombers or in desperate actions, and many others were seized by either the victorious foe or our own dominions when they declared their independence. What we have now is nothing but a mockery of the old glory, left to rot by the corruption and the inefficiency. Time has come for a comprehensive reform. We shall rebuild the Royal Navy, larger and more powerful than before. We shall rule the waves once again. Speaking of ruling the waves, I never did decide what I was going to build. Right, because I was waiting for um, Navy experience and technology. Meanwhile, we're waiting for the political power to tick up to uh, probably about 200. So academic base is currently increasing... Rapidly. 3.7 a month. Damn. Poverty rate is going up a 4.5 a month. That's really quick. And then industrial expertise is going up fast. Uh, slowly. So we're currently on secondary schooling. We'll hit tertiary, which comes with a further research buff. Sweet. Meanwhile, we're making... 750 million surplus a year. Let's pay off some more of the debt. And the Moscow autonomy is out. Defeated. The provisional commissary to Western Russia has defeated the anti communist volunteer guard. Ah, these guys are finally starting to fight. Okay. 
With the restoration of the legitimate monarch, the armed forces have returned to the forefront of political discussion. The Royal Navy is, of course, the main object of most of the government meetings. All members agree that funds must be drastically increased to the main instrument in which England rose to be an empire. How to use such funds is another matter entirely. The upteenth meeting of the matter is to be held in the restored House of the Admiralty. The building shines just like the old days and it would be so easy to forget that everything must be built from scratch. Despite the participation of the Prime Minister himself, the meeting soon degenerates into a battle between the two sides. On one side are the younger officers, mostly returned exiles from Canada who have studied with the Americans. They strongly advocate for a modern fleet based on carriers rather than battleships. While a sound proposal, this would mean abandoning the image of the Royal Navy as it has been for centuries, and some would see it as a sign of subservience to the Americans. The other faction, counting among them the old admirals who have just been reinstated, propose a completely different doctrine. The Royal Navy, they say, is more than just a fleet. It's a symbol of British greatness, one that is far from the past and thus must return. Also, they claim that the people surely appreciate a show of strength. The meeting is dismissed without any serious progress being made, but Jellicoe knows that there is no time to be lost. The Royal Navy will return to the forefront one way or the other, and the responsibility for its form rests on his shoulders. Who better than the Admiral's son for rebuilding the Navy? We rule the waves once more. And here we go, like father, like son. The Prime Minister's father, Earl Jellicoe, was a hero of the Great War. He commanded the British fleet at the Battle of Jutland, where the Kaiserliche Marine was decimated and our superiority over the North Sea secured. There, her mighty battleships and dreadnoughts pummeled their German counterparts into oblivion thanks to the power of large-caliber guns. Our leader knows that the Royal Navy became what it is thanks to its mastery of direct engagements and clever positioning, and the new fleet shall follow in its footsteps set by Admiral Jellicoe. As added value, the sight of new mighty battleships once again bearing the Union Jack will do wonders for propaganda. And we're actually going to have absolutely loads of Navy experience at the end of this. Um... Yeah, okay, you're still going. Right, I remember how the navies work. There is a automatic thing, but you have to do it manually. You can't just do shift K, right? I think I may actually have already done that. We'll see if it is automatic or not. And at some point, we'll also need to train the Air Force. The Gibraltar Dam has officially been finished. The huge construction project, the Gibraltar Dam, for some just a bottomless well, with Germany threw its resources into after the war, has finally been finished. Its long journey has brought alongside it a variety of issues which in its consequences affect far more nations than just the Reich. Yet, the responsibility for the abandoned project fell into the people who had been directly deal with the fallout, not the Germans. The Iberians had to deal with the dam whilst Europe fell into economic freefall. Despite all odds, the project has now been finished and has earned the Union a considerable amount of prestige in the international community. Iberia itself is overjoyed by the news and has proclaimed it a national victory. The Germans quickly moved in to claim credit, but outside of the national socialist sphere, this has not been accepted well. Congratulations. Well done. I know it's a pretty big achievement. So how are my deficits looking now? Uh, we probably should build kangaroos and centurions. We don't actually have the ability to make comets, I don't think. Because that armor division is really strong. So let's add Centurions, let's add Comets. Oh! Hang on. It's Kangaroos I can't do. Kangaroos must come under the other screen here. There it is. Alright, so we'll get all of those. Then because of our focus on Air Force, I think I'm going to do another one to improve Jets. Another one to improve Cass. And now I'm also going to buy in... Rubber. From...
Indonesia. And we could potentially also buy in some tungsten from the Iberians. Yeah, I think we will. Slowly but surely, starting to get some trade going. Weeks have passed since the last report, and the time is of the essence if we are to protect the newfound freedom. And this is why I asked the Prime Minister what is the status of the Royal Navy. The Deputy of the Opposition finished his intervention along the applause of his party sitting once again. It's question time in Westminster, and as most expected, quickly turned into an examination of the government's policies for rebuilding the armed forces. This isn't the first question about the military, but it's the first about the Navy in particular. And so all attention from both the MPs and the audience in the room, and at home, is on George Jellicoe as he takes his place in the small podium. I thank the honourable gentleman for his question, as it follows me with the uh, to be clear, for it allows me to be clear with the people of England and the entire Commonwealth. There is some applause from the rows of the NDL, and then he continues. For more than two decades, the Royal Navy has withered in the hands of the collaborators, and it falls upon us to mend the wounds and repair the damage done. It will be difficult, but we can succeed together. My father once led the greatest fleet in the greatest naval battle of all of history. Near Jutland Peninsula, dozens of great battleships faced off, gun to gun. There, the ships of the Royal Navy battered their German opponents, cracking hulls and shattering the Kaiser's dreams. My father... His voice breaks for a moment as the Commons listens in silence. My father was an hero of the United Kingdom, and we can be heroes too. We can rebuild the great Na the Royal Navy, greater than ever before. We shall cover the oceans once again, our battleships proudly bearing the Union Jack. The first applause comes from the Assembly, but Jellicoe ain't finished yet. From sea to shining sea, we shall return to our rightful place. Let any foe come to our island, and they shall find the guns of the Royal Navy ready to receive them. As he finishes, the entire house breaks into enthusiastic applause, and the Prime Minister smiles, satisfied that his plans will be implemented without problems. We're returning. Just you wait. So we can restore the naval titles and medals. Battleship focus... Gain more steel in Yorkshire. And then we have the mission to build the Jellicoe. Or we can start working in the Army of the Air Force. Considering we need capital ships, and that's going to require a fair amount of technology, I think we want to get at least these two finished. In order to truly recover from the disaster that struck our beloved navy 20 years ago, we need to recover our past honour. So many brave sailors perished under the waves then, and so many others fought with determination against the German collaborators during our liberation. Their names, as well as the legacy of the Royal Navy, cannot and will not be forgotten. In order to reward the loyalty and selfless sacrifice of our brave seamen, we shall restore the naval titles and medals awarded to our greatest heroes before the occupation of our homeland. The advancement of technology and doctrine is important, but what is a fleet without a soul? The Royal Navy is the greatest to have ever sailed the seas, and we shall honour the timeless traditions followed by our ancestors. Their example shall lead us in new great deeds. And we'll also build some more stuff. Um, Gloucestershire. You're going to be next. <laughs> 